finish up 2.2 and almost finish 2.3, okay? And your test is over 1.7 through 2.3. All right, so everybody okay? Um, so last time, let's just do a quick review over last time and um, make sure that everybody remembers some things that I think are important, okay? So, acceptable or unacceptable? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. What is zero over two? Zero. Zero. So if you don't write zero, I'm going to mark it wrong. Does everybody understand? No. People, listen to me. Is this on your worksheet? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. If you have not worked any of your worksheet, all this stuff that I'm telling you is on your worksheet. I'm telling you, if you write zero over two as a slope, I'm going to mark it wrong. Okay? What about two over zero? Acceptable or unacceptable? Unacceptable. unacceptable. What is it? Two. Uh, no, zero, zero, zero. Nah. Undefined. Very good. Oh. Undefined. Okay? Anything. Division by zero is not defined. So anything... Um, with a zero on the bottom, any fraction with a zero on the bottom is going to be undefined. Remember in the sixth grade when you started doing fractions, they said you can't have zero on the bottom. Division by zero is not defined. Um, if I forget on my test, what do I need to do? Rise over Use, your Use your calculator. People, this is your friend, okay? This is your friend. So um, your, your calculator, do you think he knows what zero over two is? Zero divided by two, boom, zero. Two divided by zero. Oh, error, division by zero. It's not defined, people, okay? It's not defined, you can't do it. Um, this is, why, this is, what if my slope is zero, what kind of line is it? If my slope is zero, horizontal. what kind of line is it? Horizontal line, good job. So how do I write the equation of a horizontal line? I told you a stupid way to remember. Come on, people. Oh. Yes, y equals some number, okay? So y equals some number is a horizontal line. Y'all look at that y. What is he, an upside down what? H. H. Y'all, there, no, there are no v's in him, okay? This is a vertical line. How do you write the equation of a vertical line? X equals, X a, number. equals a number. Look at that X. He's four V's all stuck together, screaming, I'm a vertical line. Okay? Come on, you're going to have to know that. That's what we're doing today. All right. So before we get started on the next section, let's make sure we got this one. Um, this is the last thing that we talked about, parallel and perpendicular lines. So I want you to, this is example four. All right? I want you to classify as parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay? Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So tell me this. If the lines are parallel, what am I going to know about their slope? The same. Yeah, they're equal. See, look at those parallel lines. Like a sideways equal sign. All right? What about perpendicular? Is it reciprocal? And? Yes, opposite reciprocal. And I always called it negative reciprocal, but then some of the kids, that messed some kids up. So they asked me to start calling it opposite reciprocal. So I said, okay, I can do that. All right, so that means one will be positive, one will be negative, and they will be reciprocal of each other. All right, if they're neither one of those, then obviously it's neither. All right, so here's the first one. Um, line one contains the points negative 2, 2, and 0, negative 1. Line 2 contains the points negative 4, negative 1, and 2, 3. Okay? So I want to know if line 1 and line 2 are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. What do we have to find, guys? The slope. Yeah, we got to find the slope. So, I taught you a trick on finding the slope. Now, listen to me. Here's where some of y'all are acting so hard-headed. Like, I taught you a trick that helps you not make the most careless mistakes, and some of y'all are like, nah, I don't need to do that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, tell me what the trick was. Um, 
To stack them. To stack my points. Y'all, you put it at the bottom or the top. There's not much room down here, so I'm going to put it up here. Zero, negative one. And what else? Keep them in that order. I would circle the Y's because really the most common mistake is going to be the, put the X's on the top instead of the Y's on the top. All right? And the other one's going to be when you start looking across the numbers, then that'll mess you up. So I always write my slope is equal to delta Y over delta X. That makes my brain think that, oh yeah, I'm going the Y's on top. I got them circled. So do you guys want to go negative one minus two or two minus a negative one? Negative one minus two. Negative one minus two. Negative one minus two. If I go negative one minus two on the top, what do I have to say on the bottom? Zero plus two. Yeah. You have to go zero minus a negative becomes a positive two. What's negative one and negative two? These are like signs. What do you do with them? Add on. Add them. Take the sign of both. What's zero plus two? Two. Two. All right. You find the slope of this bottom line all by yourself. I'll give you less than a minute. negative 4 over negative 6. What's a negative over a negative? Positive. A positive. And 4 and 6 reduced by 2. two so this becomes a 2 and this becomes a 3. So I got a positive 2 thirds. Look at those two things. Tell me what my lines are. Reciprocal. Opposite reciprocal. Uh -huh. So these numbers are opposite reciprocal, so my lines are perpendicular. Good job. Alright, everybody okay? You want to try another one? One more? Yeah? Let's do one more. So here's line A. Why are y'all look so thrilled to be here today? One, two, and four, negative three. Line B goes through the points negative four, three, and negative one, negative two. All right, you try that one. Will we eventually figure out where on the graph they want to show us? Um, we could. We could. We can, I mean, you know, right now you just have to graph them and find it. But in the next section, we're going to learn how to write equations of lines. Okay? So then I could just set the equations equal to each other and solve for x. Is that what you got for the first one? Negative five thirds? Yes? Same thing for the second one. Y'all, the only thing that you would have different, if you if you did your, instead of saying negative three minus two, you said two minus a negative three, which becomes a, a plus, your, yours would be opposite signs. You would have a positive five and a negative three. And down here, you would have a positive five and a negative three. Okay? If you flipped yours around. If both their slopes are the same, what are my lines? Very good.
Does anybody have a question? No? Everybody good? Okay. So now, um, the next problem, still in 2.2, this is the last problem in 2.2, all right? And we're going to talk about um, the sequoias. Have y'all, has anybody ever been to the Redwood Forest? Huh? It's in California? No? Okay, so do y'all know what the sequoias are, the Redwood Forest? Y'all know what those trees are? What's, what's cool about those trees? Yeah, they're big. They're huge. And, and when I say like they're big, I mean, people don't understand. If you've never been there, you're not going to really understand until you go there one day. Okay? Huh? Oh, my word. Look, this is, this is kind of a picture, okay? So, like, here is a giant sequoia. Okay? Here he is right here. And here you are. I mean, I'm talking big. Like, they used to, they had this one up there for forever, okay? Um, I saw this one, but it's it has since fallen down. Oh, I'll, but I'll show you this, and then I'll tell you something really cool. So they used to have one that you could drive through. That's how big it was, okay? Like, the tree actually was so wide, okay, that they cut a road through it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, and cars could drive through there, okay? That's how big it was, all right? Here's something cool about them. I think I sometimes, I, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I know some kind of cool facts because my sister, who was a math teacher too, she really liked um, biology, was her favorite thing, you know, bugs and all that kind of mess. Anyway, so um, so these trees, like if, like let's say we had a big windstorm last night. We know about those, right? Okay, and it had a big giant tree limb, and he broke off and fell down here. Okay, big limb. I mean, we're talking giant limb. Okay, fell down here on the ground. Now the tree is off balance. Do you agree? I mean, he lost this side of him, this whole big limb. He lost it, so now he's he's leaning like to this way. So you know what he'll do? He'll drop a limb on this side. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Like, how does he know to do that? That's really neat. And so then he's like, oh, wow, he's balanced back again. So pretty neat stuff. All right, so here's what they're asking us on this problem. They say, um, use the diagram, which I'm going to draw the picture in a second which illustrates the growth of a giant sequoia to find the average rate of change. Uh-oh, what's that? Slope. 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 Okay. Average rate of change in the diameter of the sequoia over time. All right, so they want to find the slope. So here's what they tell me. That in 1965, okay, they measured this sequoia, and he was 137 inches across. Okay, 137 inches across. And then in 2005, they measured that same tree, and now he is 141 inches across. Okay, so first of all, before we even talk about the problem, I want to talk about this 141 inches. Because um, some kids are like, oh, okay, 141 inches. So how would I turn that into feet? Divide by 12. Okay, divide by 12. So 141 divided by 12. And the diameter of that tree is almost 12 feet. Do you agree with that? 11 and 3 quarters, almost 12 feet. Anybody 6 foot? Who's 6 foot? Stand up. If you stacked two nodes on top of each other, that would be how far that tree was across. Okay? Did they say this was like an exceptionally large tree? No. They just said, this is a tree we picked and we measured it. Okay? So they are huge. All right. So we are going to find, they asked for the rate of change in the diameter. Okay? The rate of change in the diameter. And y'all said, ooh, that's the slope. Slope is delta Y over delta X. Hmm. I don't see any X's and Y's in this problem. Could I represent this information right here as an X and a Y? Who would be my ex? 
the growth. Yeah, the day. Y'all, time is, anytime you have a choice, time is going to be your X, okay? So the 1965 is going to be my X, and the 137 is going to be my Y. All right? What's this point going to look like? Perfect. Okay, and now I'm just finding the slope between two points. Do you agree? So I'm going to move this guy, stack my points, 2005, 141. I'm going to circle my Y so I remember they go on top. And I'm going to say M is equal to delta Y over delta X. So I'm going to say 141 minus 137 on the top. Ooh, I said 7 and I wrote 5. So, what do I have to say on the bottom? 2005 minus 1960. Perfect. So, you can pick whatever order that you want to, right? As long as you keep that order. So, on the bottom, you have to say 2005 minus 1965. All right. What's 141 minus 137? Four. Four. What's 2005 minus 1965? 40. 40. All right, 4 over 40, what does that reduce down to? 1 over 10. So let's say we went to the forestry meeting, okay? We're in the forestry meeting, and our big boss is up there. We're trying to shine, look really good and smart, all right? And he says, what's the rate of change in our sequoias out there? And you say the slope is 110. What's, gonna, what's he going to do? Are you? Yeah, people, he's going to be like, what, what am I talking about? What are you talking about? We're not talking about slope. We're talking about the rate of change in the diameter. Do you see what I'm saying? We, that is the slope, okay? But tell me what this means with respect to my sequoias. One inch per every 10 years. Very good. They grow one inch every 10 years. Okay? Now, if I said that, you'd be like, oh, thank you, thank you. All right, you're doing great. All right, anybody got a question? Okay, so let's move on to the next section, all right? The next section looks like this, 2.3. Um, so, make sure we understand this. Um, tell me when your test is. Yes. Yeah. It says Wednesday, Thursday on my paper. Um, it is Monday. So your test will be Friday, Monday. A day, B day. Everybody got it? What's it over? 1.7 to 2.3. To 2.3. 2 1.7 to 2.3. Okay? So when you go over there to my book, when I get finished before the bell rings, and you go over there to my book, then I want you to take pictures of the chapter review and the chapter test from 1 point, on 1.7, 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3. Okay? Um, all right. When is the worksheet 2.1 through 2.3 due? Monday. Yeah, when your test is, all right, because I won't quite get finished. Now, look, I want to warn you. Some of you are thinking, wow, we just have a little bitty bit left, so we'll have the rest of the class to study for the test. No, I'm going on, and I'm going to start covering 2.4 next class, okay? Is it going to be on the test? No. no, it will not, all right? So you're going to have two jobs, keeping up with what we're doing, and getting prepared for your test on Monday, okay? So this is going to be, this whole section is about graph linear functions, okay? We're gonna be graphing linear functions. Now if I graph a linear function, what does it look like? A line. A line, all right? So these things that I graph, they should look like a line. So f of x, is equal to, what's the parent function for a linear function? X. X. And you called it an identity function, right? On our memory test. Tell me what the domain is. All real numbers. Yes. So negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range? Negative infinity. <coughs> negative infinity to positive infinity. Good. All right. So example number one is going to have me graph the equation. Now you did this in Algebra 1, okay, so you should know how to do this. 
If I'm going to graph an equation, the first thing I should do is solve for what? Y. Y. Always solve for Y. Because then it's in what form? What do y'all call that? Slope intercept. Yeah, slope intercept. Y equals MX plus B. This is slope intercept form. Why do we call it that? People, you can look at it and shout out the slope and the Y intercept. Okay, so what does M stand for? Yeah, that's my slope. Okay, what's my y-intercept? B. Okay, so I'm going to do four problems. I'm going to put them all on one graph because I don't like drawing a bunch of graphs. So I'm going to make me a big graph in the middle. I'm just going to go out to seven every time. Um, listen to the things I tell you because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn you. I'm going to tell you what the most common made mistakes are. Okay? So here's the first one. Are you ready? Or you need some more time? So the first equation we're going to graph is y is equal to 2x. Every time I graph an equation, I'm going to write what the slope and the y-intercept is. Okay, that's going to help me not make careless mistakes. So, what is my slope? 2. two. Is it 2x? No. No, people, it does not have a variable on it. If you put a variable on it, that's one mistake. I'm going to count it wrong. Okay? It doesn't ever change. It's just a number, a constant. What's my y-intercept? Very good. There's nothing out here, and the number for nothing is zero. All right, so what do I graph first? My y-intercept or my slope? Y-intercept. And where does a y-intercept go? On the y-axis. On the y-axis. That's why it's called a y-intercept. So what's the most common mistake to do to it? Put it on the x-axis. Be careful about that, guys. Okay, it's a y-intercept. It goes on the y-axis. It's zero. Now, when I'm doing slope, a lot of times kids like to have a fraction, so I'll put it over one if it's not a fraction. I'm gonna go up if it's positive, down if it's negative. I'm always gonna run to the right, okay? I'm always gonna run to the right. Sometimes kids go right, left, they're like, oh, whatever. But if you go down and to the left, down and to the left, some kids think they're making a negative slope when actually you made a negative over a negative, which is a positive slope. So I don't ever do that. I'll learn how to go to the left. We'll do that a little later. But um, I suggest you go to the right. So my y-intercept is zero. My slope is two over one. So I'm gonna go up two and over one. How many points does it take to make a line? Two. Two, so I want three, okay? So up two and over one. And then I'm gonna draw my line. Put arrows on the end, because it does keep it smooth. Anybody got a question? Very good. All right, here's B. Negative X plus Y equals three. You do it. Negative X plus Y equals three. Jordan. Negative x plus y equals 
Okay? So, however you want to do it, the actual proper way is to add x to both sides. On the left, it'll cancel out, and on the right, you'll be left with x plus 3. But sometimes we think of easier ways to think about stuff. So, I'm going to pull my x over to the other side of the equal sign, and what's going to happen to it? It's going to change the sign. So, over here is negative, over here, you'll be positive. Just another way to think about it, guys. Okay? So, what's my slope? Y equals, oh, it's 1. 1. What's my y-intercept? Three. Three. Okay, what do I do first? The three, my y-intercept. Is that right here? No. What's that? X-intercept. That's an x-intercept, people. That's not a y-intercept, okay? So be careful about that. On the y-axis, I'm going to plot three. One, two, three. Here it is. My slope is one. You want to make it a fraction? Put it over one. So I'm going to go up one and right one and up one and right one, and there's my line. Anybody got a question? Okay, let's do another one. Here's the next one. Got this one? Okay, y equals negative 3. People, it's already solved for y. It doesn't have an x? What? There is no x? What kind of line is this? Zero. Horizontal line. Okay, y'all, this is a horizontal line. Look at that y. He's an upside down h screaming. I'm a horizontal line. Where? Where y is negative 3. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So here's my horizontal line. Horizontal lines, they're, I don't usually write all that stuff down for a horizontal line because it's really easy. I just look at it and go, oh, I know what you are, okay? But since I have to know that stuff, I'm going to go ahead and write it. What is my slope? Zero. Zero. Guess how many x's you have? Zero x's, okay? You have zero x's. There's none. You don't have any. That's zero. Um, what's my y-intercept? Negative three. Negative three. Negative three. All right, last one, you ready? 2x equals eight. 2x equals eight. Got it? Okay, I'm solving for y. Oh, oh, we got a problem. There is no y. So what do I do? Solve for x. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 2. And x is equal to what? 4. four. x is equal to 4. What kind of line is that? Vertical, Vertical line where x is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it goes like this and like this. All right? What if I asked you, what's the slope? Zero. Zero. Four over eight. Undefined. So if it's a horizontal line, it's a zero, zero slope, and if it's vertical, it's undefined. Yes. Okay. Think about this. Think about this. Think about skis, okay? Um, a horizontal line. Here it is right here. If I put my four-year-old on a pair of skis on this horizontal line, would he be okay? Yeah. Yeah. Because it has zero slope. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Whoa. What if I put him on this one? This slope is so steep, I can't define it. I can't tell you how much it is, okay? So, he's going to either be a wreck or an extreme skier. All right, um, let's try another problem, okay? This is example two. Example two, we're going to graph, all right? So, I'm going to draw me one more little graph over here. And 
and we're going to graph 2x plus 3y equals 3. All right, I'm going to give you a minute to do it. 2x plus 3y equals 3. Generally, when you, um, when you start solving for your y, when you do this, you put your x first, so it'll be in that slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. But we still got to solve for y. When you divide by the coefficient of y, you remember to divide everybody by that. So this becomes negative 2 thirds x plus what's 3 over 3? 1. 1. All right, what's my slope? As soon as I see a, ne a negative slope, I go, oh, we've got to be very careful. I want to look at my graph, and my line wants to be slanted down, right? If it's a negative slope, he should be slanting down like this. What's my y-intercept? So I'm going to go right here? No. No. Y'all listen to me. That's what, there, there's going to be two people in this class, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to go right here. That's not right. My y-intercept, y-intercept is on the y-axis, so it's right here. My slope is negative two-thirds, so I'm going to go down two, one, two. Don't skip the axis, you have to count it two, all right? One, two, and over three. One, two, three. Make a big dot. Down two, one, two, and over three. One, two, three. Make a big dot. And here's my line. Now, is there any way I could check this and make sure it's correct? Put it in your calculator? Yes. Okay? So why didn't I teach you in your calculator? Because people, here's what kids do. They go here, and there's my equation right there. Negative 2 thirds x plus 1. Okay? And then they graph. And they try to copy this. Okay? And that's where part of that 1 comes from right there. Because they're thinking it goes through that 1 when it doesn't. Alright? So, um... So be careful trying to do that. Could I check these points and make sure these points were on this line? Yeah. Where? There is a little table. So see up there those blue words that says table? I would go second and graph. And there's my table. Um, there's my zero, 1. That's this point right here. This point right here is 3, negative 1. There's 3, negative 1. And this point right here is 6, negative three. And there he is. Six negative three. Okay? So I could tell they're all on there. Um, all right, let's do another problem. Example three. Okay? This is what we're going to be talking about. Let me draw a picture of it. You tell me if you can guess.
okay? And the equation that gives his body length with respect to his age is this equation. Y is equal to 5X plus 42. Okay, 5X plus 42. Now, let's watch and see how much you know. So, first of all, what's the slope? Five. What does that mean? Five for every one. Five for every one. Five what for every one? Five puppies for every Inches one for every good month. kind act you do? One Inches inch for every, every five months. One inch for every five months. That's not wow. what you said. You said five to one. Five inches every month. Very good. See, you said it right, so keep on. All right? So remember this. That Remember, you said slope was five, right? Slope is delta y over delta x. Y is his body length, okay? And X is his age. It's his body length with respect to his age. So if it's five over one, he grows five inches every month, okay? So if I said, tell me the rate of growth of this walrus calf, you would say, you wouldn't say it's five because that's the slope. You would say he grows five inches every month, all right? So, that's my y-intercept. What does that mean? It was, he was born to start two inches. Yes, people, that dude was almost four feet long when he was born. Okay, so big baby, big baby, 42 inches when he's born. Okay, good job. All right, so now let's graph this. Um, now, this is just a line. Do you agree? Yeah. What's the domain of a line? All real numbers. Okay. So this domain is X. It's his age. Hmm. Can it only be positive? Oh, okay. So this has what is called an implied domain. Okay? An implied domain. What's going to happen is that I might write something as a, as a linear equation, but it might have an implied domain if it's talking about a real-life situation. Okay? So age can't be negative, can it? So his implied domain starts where? Yeah, he starts at any x such that x is, starts at zero, and then what? Yeah, it really doesn't, um, I'm going to say greater than zero. If I wrote it in interval notation, I would say zero, and then it, it doesn't, go to infinity, right? I mean, if, if that's his age, we know he doesn't live forever. I'm going to guess in 200 years, he's probably going to smell really bad, okay? So he's not going to live forever. I might look up what's the average lifespan of a walrus, and that would probably be the number I would put. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, now um, the Y is his growth, okay? So let's, let's plot this on a coordinate plane and talk about a few things that happen here. All right, so do you agree that this thing starts at 42, right? Mm -hmm. So between 0 and 42, is any part of this graph taking place? No, all right? And he's growing pretty fast, five, five inches a month, right? So I'm going to start at 40, and then I'm going to go, um, this is 40, and I'm going to kind of, watch what I'm going to do, and cheat just a little bit. I'm going to say that's 50, and this is 60. There's 70, and there's 80. I'm only numbering every other one, so I don't have to write so much stuff. This is 90, and this is 100. This is 110, and this is 120. Okay? And this is the body length. Always label your axis so people know what it is. And it's also in inches. All right? So we're talking about inches there now, not feet. Oh, my word. What if he was 42 feet when he was born? That would be like prehistoric or something. All right, so down here I have his age. That's on the X's. See, that's that time thing again. And that's in months. Okay? And uh, I'm just going to go by twos, and I'm going to take him out until he's two years old. Okay? So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 22 and 24, so he's two right there. Okay, now there's only one problem with this graph. 
Okay, you would get points taken off if this was your graph. And let me show you why. Look on this x, this y axis. Noah, you with me? Yes, ma'am. All right, quit staying up so late. All right, so look, my very first tick mark is right here at 40. When I went from zero to 40, did I say, all right, I'm going by 40? Y'all, if you said this is zero and your first tick mark is 40, then you're going, I'm going by 40s. And then I switched off and started going by 10s, right? So what do I have to put in there? You gotta tell me there's a break, okay? You gotta tell me that there's a break. So, hey, part of this graph is missing. I didn't need it, because it doesn't start until 42. Hello? Hello? change in here and go by something else. Yeah. No, you can't. Oh, what does a break look like? Can it's, I it's like a little heartbeat. Okay. okay. And it just means that part of this graph is missing right here. Oh, like okay. Really so it just looks like a little heartbeat. You, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Like it's like this and then it goes like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you got a break in your graph. All right. I could do it to the X axis. All right. Or I could do it to the Y axis. The X axis doesn't need it. All right, so my y-intercept is 42, so that's about right here. You with me? Okay, now, do I want to use that slope and try to go up 5 and over 1? No, because no, I went up by 10s and here I went by 2s. That's not going to be a very safe thing to do. How many points does it take to make a line? 30. 2. I said put 3 on your graph, but I'd be okay. This is a real-life situation, right? So I'd be okay with two. So really all I need is one more point out here somewhere. Okay, so here's the rules. If you get too close to this point, you can make your line look really funky. You can skew it a whole lot because we're kind of estimating where it is, right? So the farther you stay away from that point, the better off you are. I may not want to go out here to 24 because good night, he might be way off of my graph. Okay, so I'm going to go to this 12. And I'm going to say, when x is 12, what's y? Will that give me another point? Yes, How am I going to find it? That's yeah, plug that point in. Okay. y is equal to 5 times 12 plus 42. 5 times 12 plus 42. What's 5 times 12? 60, 60 and 42 make 102. So at 12, he's at 102. Now I can see that this is a picture of his growth rate. You can see how fast this guy grows. Okay, now I'm going to put an error on it, but I want to talk about this. Okay, does he keep growing forever and ever and ever? No. No. Y'all listen, this is what happens to a person's growth. All right? So at first they grow really, really fast. And then it starts to slow down a little bit, and then eventually they'll just do a horizontal It'll just go into a horizontal line, all right? And actually, it start going down a little bit. Yeah, it start. It really doesn't go down. You don't actually shrink. Um, what happens is that your bones get kind of brittle as you get older, and so they start to kind of crumble and deteriorate and everything. And so that sinks, you know, everything in and makes you shorter. Like my mother, 
was always five foot tall. I mean, she wasn't very big, but she was five foot tall. Now, I don't even think she's 4'10". I would never say that to her because she would be mad, all right? But I'm pretty sure she's not 4'10". That's small. So she's, yeah, she's a little short. All right. So last thing I want to talk about, and then we're going to be done, and you can go take pictures of the chapter reviews and stuff. All right, so we're going to talk about standard form. That's the x plus y equals Yes, that is, this is standard form. Ax plus by equals c. That is standard form. When you have your equation in this form, now the only thing that we lack talking about is when it's in standard form, I can show you a really easy way to graph where you don't have to solve for y, okay? And it'll be very helpful. So, um, but this is standard form, and here's what you have when you have standard form. You have the x's and the y's on the left. Do you agree? Yes, no. All right, who's on the right? The y-intercept, c. c. My constant. Oh. We can't call him my y-intercept because you would actually have to divide by this coefficient of y and that would become him. He would be C over B. Okay? So, but we're going to say the constant on the right. That's just my plain number. Okay? All right. Now, A, B, and C have stipulations. They must be integers. In order to be in standard form, A, B, and C must be integers. What is an integer? What can I not have? No. Fractions. Fractions or decimals. Very good. Do you see why those definitions that we learned are important? No fractions and no decimals. Those are not allowed in standard form. All right, so let's quickly do three problems. Here's the first one. 3y minus 2 equals 7x. Okay? I'm going to put this guy in standard form. Y'all, all I'm going to do is move stuff. If you move something across the equal sign, it's just like it changes its sign. Where is this 7x supposed to be? On the left? So if I move him to the left, what does he become? Negative 7x. 3y is on the left, so plus 3y equals this negative 2 should go to the right, and if it's negative on the left, what is it on the right? Positive 2. So this is standard form. Okay? Now, here's my only warning. Right now they say it's okay. All right? But when I was in school, A could not be negative. They would not let this first term be a negative. All right? So, and books let you do it now, but here's the problem with that. Standardized tests like the SAT and the ACT, they're probably not going to write it like this. They're not going to let that first term be negative. So what would they do to all of these? Divide by a negative yeah, one. Yeah, divide by negative one, and it just changes everybody's sign. So I'm okay with this up here, but understand if you were taking a standardized test, this would probably be the way they wrote it. Jordan, can you explain why they did that? I think that, I don't know, but I, I mean, when I was a kid and we learned standard form, we, that was one of the stipulations. A, B, and C had to be integer, integers, and A could not be negative. That was, and then they took it out of the book. I think because they thought it just doesn't look very proper, it looks a lot cleaner when it's like this than when it's like that. But, I mean, essentially it's the same thing. All right, here's your next one. Um, Two-thirds X plus four Y is equal to one-half. Well, he looks good. I got my X and my Y on my left. My plain number's on the right. What's the only problem with him? Fraction. Yeah, I got a fraction. Y'all, what makes a fraction? What part of the fraction makes the fraction? The denominator. The denominator. If it didn't have a denominator, would that be a fraction? No. So the denominator is the problem. That's what you need to get rid of. Okay? Kids' first instinct is if you want to get rid of this fraction, multiply by his reciprocal, right? No, it'll get rid of this one, but you'll create one here, and you see what I'm saying? So just multiply by, look at the denominators. What's the least common multiple between 3 and 2? 6. So that's what I'm going to multiply by. 
All right? Now, remember when we did this? Remember this? Remember when we divided by the bottom? Multiply by the top. Remember that? How many times does 3 go into 6? What's 2 times 2? So that's 4x. You've got to multiply everything by 6. What's 6 times 4y? 24y. Wait, so why did you multiply by 6? Because the least common multiple between 3 and 2 is 6. Oh. Start with the biggest number and list as multiples. 3 times 1 is 3, 2 doesn't go in. 3 times 2 is 6, 2 goes in. It's also the least common denominator. Okay? That's another way to think about it. All right, we're going to do the same thing over here. How many times does 2 go into 6? Three times. What's 3 times 1? Three. What's half of 6? All right, what's the common mistake there? I made it, I, but I actually just forgot to write the four down, okay? But they forget, they don't want to multiply this guy by six because he, he's not a fraction, but it doesn't matter. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. All right, last one, C looks like this, 4.1x plus 7.28y equals 25. Okay, so this one has decimals in it, and that's not allowed. It has to be an integer. So how am I going to make all of these integers? Okay, if I did that, would they all be integers? Okay, if I move this one to the two to the right, what do I have to do to this one? Two to the right. Two to the right. Really what you're doing is you're multiplying by 100. Okay? So here's what you're going to do. You're going to multiply by some power of 100, of 10. All right? And what you do is you look at the guy that has the most digits behind the decimal point. He has two. So I need two zeros. So that's 100. And just like up there, everybody gets multiplied by 100. So these, when I multiply by 100, it has two zeros. So this decimal point will move two places to the right. And what will this become? 410x. What will this become? 728y. Uh, is equal. What will this become? Yeah. All right. Anybody got a question? Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to go and take pictures of the chapter even in the chapter test. Okay, you can be studying for your test. If you have any time left, I'd be working on my worksheet. Okay, probably look at a few problems on my worksheet.